Welcome friends. We are obviously not at the hangar in Oshawa or at Edenvale. We're in a an industrial park in Woodenville, Washington. And uh, I came out here today to check out the manufacturing facilities at Dynon Certified. I'm planning on upgrading uh, some of the screens in Mike Victor uniform in conjunction with doing a new stationary panel with six pack arrow. This is gonna allow me to put the larger screens in Mike Victor uniform. So while I was out here, I thought I'd stop by Dynon and uh, and take a look what they've got. Hey, Michael. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, thanks for inviting me out to Dynon. Yeah, welcome. Uh, last time I saw you at uh, Oshkosh, very busy show for you guys. Yeah, Oshkosh is the uh, centerpiece of the flying season for us. Uh, thousands and thousands of customers throughout the week. Um, you know, uh, aircraft at our booth like yours, uh, some folks uh, just coming to show us uh, pictures of their panel to learn how to use the uh, the equipment in our forums, and uh, some people asking, for, you know, some technical questions as, as well. I had a lot of people come and sit in Mike Victor uniform. They just wanted to touch the buttons. They wanted to ask me about uh, Dynon in certified aircraft, because everybody knows you as a, as a home-built, in right. the home-built market, but you're big into certified aircraft. Yeah, you know, we started, um, you know, decades ago, uh, over 20 years ago, uh, in the home-built market, we have tens of thousands of aircraft, uh, RVs, and similar equipped. And then in 2016, uh, we did a project with uh, the EAA to bring our EFIS D10A uh, to the certified market that got approved in Cessna 172s and then a couple hundred other aircraft. And then a couple years later, we graduated that to the entire Skyview HDX product line. And now that is approved in over 600 aircraft. That's a lot of aircraft. Yeah, with autopilots available in uh, about a half dozen uh, other models. So you've got setups here. That's a Mooney. These are Beechcraft. Yep. Um, and then, of course, the home builds. Yep. Uh, so I've got your 7-inch screens in my director uniform. Next year, I want to change the stationary panel, which will allow me to put the larger screens in. So I wanted to take a look at what you've got. And I also spy over there the D30. Indeed, that's which it. Is, which is one of your newest things, and that looks amazing. Let's go take a look at that. Let's do it. So I have the D10A. You do. And it's a standby backup in, right. the, in the certified world. It does a whole bunch of things that I don't use. I love this because it's got a great screen, first of all. It has an incredible screen, but it only does what I really need it to do as a backup. Like it's stripped down. Was that, was that purposeful? Yeah, so the EFIS D10A was uh, our first, I guess, technically second product. There are yeah, thousands and thousands of, of those out there, uh, mostly in home built, and then it got used as a standby in the certified market. And that product is, you know, about 20 years old. And so the D30 is kind of the next generation of that. Um, bigger, brighter display, um, the aesthetics that are matched to HDX. And then what we decided to do, the EFIS D10A, kind of uh, gradually increased its capability over time. It can do things like autopilot. The D30 is really specifically designed with the certified HDX system in mind. And so like you said, it does just what it needs to do. It's got airspeed, altitude, attitude, slip skid, uh, turn coordinator, and uh, vertical speed. And that's about it. In fact, you know, the only adjustments that there really are is if you know, I touch the altimeter, I can you know, scrub, uh, you know, turn this vir uh, virtual dial up or down to set the altimeter and that's and so intuitive yeah it's, it's I, I walked up to it and i said oh i touched there and that's and it, it took me no time at all to figure it out which in an environment where you're using a backup right is incredibly important to me yep and then there's a, a menu for brightness but most people leave it on auto most of the time and yeah so really it's just a, a single adjustment device so when i i think when i move up to this screen i'll, I'll replace the d10 with the d30 that sounds like a plan yeah Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the shop. All right. Okay, Michael, yeah. where are we? So we are back in um, one of our production areas. Uh, we do all of our manufacturing uh, here in Woodenville, Washington, and then some down in uh, Canby, Oregon. And our production floor is set up in t different factories um, that are named. So this is uh, Beats, uh, which is the servo factory. So kind of this set of tables, uh, this kind of uh, th this, this circle here is where all of the autopilot servos are manufactured. And then this over here is pitot tubes and... Yep, we got uh, pitot tubes. So we got, um, th there's a compound that is curing. So that's what we're seeing on the, on the rack here. So Michael, right here in Woodenville, Washington, you're doing uh, design, engineering, assembly, manufacturing, all in-house. That's right. Um, components from around the world, though, 
Yeah, presumably because that's just the way the economy works. That's right. Um, but everything important is done right here, so you have really good control over your quality. That, that's right. Yeah. In fact, ha uh, something like just under half of our headcount in this building is uh, manufacturing operations. Fantastic. Uh, it's really well laid out. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I just want to pick stuff up and take it home. So is this all product ready to go? Yep, so all this uh, behind me over here is basically our inventory uh, cage. And so uh, a lot nicer than it was perhaps, uh, let's say last year when there was a supply chain crisis that affected basically anybody that made electronics, including us. Um, we did, I think, better than a lot of other people did in that situation. You know, our, our founder is a semiconductors uh, entrepreneur. Um, it was, was his original history. And the semiconductor industry has this kind of like boom bust cycle anyway. And so like while many manufacturers are always thinking like lean, you know, uh, short duration between inventory turns, as a small manufacturer, we kind of think a little bit differently knowing that like semiconductors kind of can be hard to find at times. So we always carry a large inventory of, of components and parts. That wasn't enough to survive the, the crisis of last year uh, unscathed. And so for a while, we had some uh, displays in particular that were back order for, uh, for some months. Oh, we're past that now. Inventory is looking great. And so this is all parts inventory. Yep, These so this is chips and displays. Yeah, chips, displays, um, other hardware that we get from various manufacturers. And um, you know, as a result of some of those problems that we talked about last year, uh, it's a, there's a lot of it. Okay, so through this door over here, Michael, I see Vachon Aircraft. Yep. But there's also an Overland Trailer Company? That's right, yeah. So our, our owner, uh, John Tarode, also owns a couple of other companies. Aviation folks will be familiar with uh, Vachon Aircraft. They make a light sport aircraft. And there's uh, another company that's affiliated with them called Mammoth Overland, and they make uh, overlanding uh, trailers for camping. I'm in love with that trailer. That camping trailer is absolutely amazing. Um, I have no use for one, but I want one badly. Okay, so Michael, I recognize some of these shapes. These are the boards that you make. Yeah, these are the boards that go into the various um, control panels, the autopilot control panel, the knob control panel. So in this room, on this floor, you take the raw boards and actually manufacture the, the That's do the pick and place in the whole yeah, that's right. That, and that's newer for us, you know, uh, going back, let's say, 10 plus years ago, uh, we would, like many small companies do, outsource all of our circuit board manufacturing to third parties. But bringing stuff in-house just lets you have, you know, better quality control, uh, better lead times, um, better everything. And so now the vast majority of our circuit boards, everything from what you saw, the control panels to the um, uh, some of the boards in the main products, all are manufactured in-house on our service mount or SMT line. Gives you better quality control. Absolutely. Uh, keeps your timeline shorter probably too. Yep. It's fantastic. So this is the SMT line, this is what you? Yep, this is the SMT line. Um, I'm not a manufacturing expert, but the rough order of operations is uh, naked circuit boards go in this end. They are kind of conveyor belted uh, down through here. Uh, these machines that they're loading now are um, uh, place all of the uh, microchips and the resistors, capacitors, the electronic components onto the circuit board as it makes its way through the machine. And then finally, there's an oven which, um, which sets uh, and, uh, the solder and, and, the, and the electronic components to the boards. And so down here, testing? Yep, so once things come off of the, um, the SMT line, there are a variety of test fixtures that let us verify that everything is uh, you know, populated correctly, that there are no flaws in any of the processes, that uh, the circuit boards are functionally working before they actually go into a product. And then once they are in a product, then they go through another set of tests that confirm the, that they work. Okay, so Michael, where are we now? So we are up at uh, Payne Field in Everett, Washington. This is the Dynon Certified Research and uh, Development Facility. Okay. Where we have um, all of the airplanes that we are uh, putting autopilots into. So airplanes that are probably already on our approved model list to get the Dynon certified uh, okay. system, but that don't yet have autopilot approval. And there's some guy standing right behind you there. Who's that guy? So this is David Weber. Uh, he manages the R&D facility and uh, does a lot of the, the wrenching and other work on and around these airplanes. So David, mm -hmm. tell me about your, tell me about your a typical day here in your, in your hangar. 
Well, one of the wonderful things about here is that I don't have a typical day. Um, we do a whole bunch of different things, uh, everything from uh, doing tire changes on airplanes to installing uh, the bracketry for our autopilot systems. And that's quite a process. So you're, you're dealing with installing stuff mm -hmm. and doing the testing mm -hmm. in order to get to the STC process or get through the STC process. That's right. Can you kind of lead us through that? Because I don't think a lot of people really understand what, what happens. Well, it takes a lot of people to do it, and we've got some great people on the certification team that get us through all this stuff. Um, sometimes it can get really complicated to the point where you get a little frustrated, but uh, let me kind of walk you through the process real Fantastic. quickly. Okay. The first step that we have is obviously we decide what airplane we're going to do it in, and that's based on marketing research, et cetera. Once we've made that selection, um, we start doing the uh, research and analysis on where the autopilot systems are going to go. And once we decide on where that system is going to go within the aircraft, um, I have a, uh, a CAD technician that comes out and he'll scan the airplane in that area. And then he goes back to the office and he does a, a 3D rendering of that model. And that's when the engineers start jumping in. At that point, the engineers start developing the actual brackets that will hold the servos. And they do that based on a lot of things like um, how much force it's going to take to uh, push the control surface. And we also have a, a structure and a fatigue analysis engineer on board that do analysis on, on those two subjects. Um, once we have a good idea, we'll go ahead and make some, uh, some prototype parts up and we'll see how they fit in the plane. And if things are working out really good, then we will actually do the install in the airplane with those prototype parts and go fly the plane, see how things work. If we wanna make changes after those, then we make changes. Um, we obviously have to go back to our structure and our loads analysis engineers uh, with those changes. So as you can see, it's sort of this iterative process that just continues on and on. Once we're ready and we're happy with everything, that's when we start getting the authorities involved, like the Federal Aviation Administration. Um, we start talking to them about what we're going to do, and we start going along uh, submitting some of the paperwork. We've developed, we're developing installation manuals along the way. Um, we're developing um, IPCs and uh, continuing, every, continuing airworthiness certification stuff. All this stuff just takes time and time and iterative process. Once we're happy with that, we will actually um, take out the prototype parts and have certified conforming parts made and that will go back into the airplane. At that point, we're ready to have uh, a DAR come out and take a look and he'll like actually bless the installation. We kind of joke here that we say he puts a little holy water on it and we walk off after that. After that, then more flight testing is done, more paperwork is submitted and all this can take months if not years to do at this point. Um, once all that is done, um, then we get that uh, STC certification on top of that. So it's not an overnight process. It is not. There's so much that goes into this. There's a lot. Although I, that was like three minute explanation, we're talking months of uh, iterative process. Testing, retesting, changes, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Right. And a simple change such as changing the diameter of a capstan can take months to do because we have to go back and change um, installations. We have to do a different loads analysis. We have to do a different fatigue analysis. All this kind of stuff just adds up over time and time. And once you submit that paperwork to the FAA, the FAA has a grace period to respond to you. So you can see how just by doing a simple change takes that process and stretches it out over time. Okay, so we've spent the day at Dynon, learned a lot about what goes into the products that are in Mike Victor uniform. Um, I think that makes me a better pilot knowing what's going on. Makes me a better pilot because I understand what's in the plane, which is fantastic. But I also love flying behind the Dynon product. Um, it's intuitive to me. It's very easy for me to operate and I, I love having it in the plane. So thanks guys for all that you do.